You've probably noticed that once in a while on my channel, you'll see a little animation pops up that reminds you to subscribe or shows you how to find me on other social media platforms or invites you to join my Patreon community. Well, those little animations, I don't know, I refer to them as snipes. Back when I worked in broadcasting a million years ago, that's what we called them. I don't know what people call them today. If you know, let me know down in the description. But basically what's happened is that Patreon has adopted a new logo. And so I need to update that Patreon animation. And I thought I would just like take you guys along for the creative process, if that's interesting to you. I'm gonna be doing this primarily in Apple Motion. So it's going to be an Apple Motion tutorial. And without further ado, let's unveil the new Patreon logo. Isn't it breathtaking? Honestly, this logo, I'm having such a struggle trying to figure out what to do with this logo because to me, it's just, it just looks like such a blob. All I can think about when I look at this logo is, and stay with me here, the Family Guy episode when Stewie clones himself. So there's two Stewies, but one of them is like, not right. Like this logo to me looks like it was cloned by Stewie. So we've definitely got our work cut out for us today, but I'm gonna have a positive attitude and I'm gonna try to come up with something. So the good news is our friends at Patreon, who we love, we love Patreon, they have given us the ability to download high resolution versions of this logo in many different file formats. And truly, I really appreciate it. So what they've given me here is black and white versions of the new logo. I've got an AI file, a JPEG file, a PNG, and an SVG. What I'm going to do is open the SVG in Pixelmator Pro and save it as a motion project. Because what the SVG file is going to give me is this logo as a shape with control points that I can modify in Pixelmator Pro. And then when I open it up in Apple Motion, It'll retain all those control points and I can modify them in motion. So I'm just gonna select the logo, right click and make it editable. And now you can see there are all of my control points. I'm not gonna do anything else with this in Pixelmator Pro. I'm just going to export this in the format of a motion project. And then I'm going to open the motion file that Pixelmator created. Now in motion, I've made my canvas background this kind of light gray so we can see the black logo over it clearly. And we're gonna have to change the dimensions of our project because you can see that it's got the square resolution of the Pixelmator project. So under project properties, I'm going to change this to a 4K resolution. And you can see if you look at my project pane, the logo is in fact a shape. And if I right click and select edit points, there are all my points. So my idea for this logo is to have it start in the shape of a heart and then morph into this melted P formation. So what I wanna do though, is make sure that my heart is generally the same dimensions as this original logo. So I'm going to draw some ruler lines around the new Patreon logo. And so when I morph this into a heart, I want the heart to generally fill this square in the same way. So now what I'm going to do is just move my playhead to like the middle of my timeline here. Let's select this shape in our project pane, head on over to shape in the inspector window and under geometry, I'm going to make a keyframe here for all of my points. I wanna make sure I keep a record of where these points belong. This is where they're going to land. Now I'm gonna head on over to the library tab and under shapes, I'm going to grab this heart and I'm going to drop it in my project pane and I'm going to use this as a reference. You'll see what I mean in a second. So I'm going to bring that heart up so the edges of it are touching my ruler lines. And then I'm just gonna like distort this a little bit. I want this bottom tip to come to the bottom of my ruler lines here. I'm gonna select these two points. I'm gonna bring these up a little bit. And I want it to be generally filling the square just like the Patreon logo does. Okay, so this is gonna be my reference. In my project pane, I'm gonna bring the Patreon logo above that. And now what I'm going to do is drag my playhead backward in my timeline. Let's go back to the shape tab and geometry. And I'm gonna start playing with these control points to make the shape match my heart reference. So I'm just gonna start playing with all these control points and do my best to turn this P into a heart. While I'm repositioning these control points, if you're curious about my Patreon community, what it does is it gives you access to all of my working files from my Apple Motion tutorials here on YouTube so you can poke around and see how I build things. And even if you join today, you still get access to every single motion tutorial I've ever published. So now we've got a reasonably symmetrical heart shape. I'm gonna get rid of my ruler lines by just grabbing them and dragging them 
to the left and to the top of the screen. I'm going to disable my pink heart that I used as a reference. And I'm going to scrub my playhead. You can see how it's morphing from the heart shape to the P. I'm gonna come back and play with the timing of this. But for now, I'm gonna head up to my project pane. I'm going to delete out that pink heart reference and I'm going to right click my shape and group it on its own. And now what I'm going to do is reduce the scale and bring it down here toward the bottom of the screen. Now let's add some text. So I'm gonna grab the text tool and I'm just gonna start with some text here. So the first line of text is gonna say, love my content with a question mark. Let's change this font to, I don't know, you guys, what do you think? Let's go Poppins. And I'm going to make it medium weight. I'm gonna center up this text and I think I'm gonna make this pretty big. I'm gonna duplicate this text and I'm gonna change this text to join my Patreon. And I'm gonna duplicate it one more time and put in the address of my Patreon account. So now let's go back to our project pane. We've got our morphing shape and we've got three lines of text. And what I'm going to do is make sure that the left edge of all of my text lines are lined up. And then I'm going to disable the second and third lines of text that I created. So we're just here with the love my content. It's not perfectly centered yet, but I'm not going to worry about that. So now I'm gonna start adding motion to all of these elements. The first thing I know I wanna do is I want the morph on the shape to happen a lot faster. So I'm just going to tighten up these keyframes. Now I'd like to add a behavior to that shape for how it comes in. So in the inspector under properties on the scale line, let's add a parameter behavior and let's go overshoot. I'm gonna cue up my playhead to the very beginning of my timeline and under behaviors, let's reduce that start value to negative 100 because we want it to disappear. In my timeline, I'm gonna make the overshoot happen a lot faster. So I'm gonna select the overshoot behavior in my timeline and hit the O key to tighten it up. And I'm going to play with the ramp duration on this. Let me open up my keyframe editor so we can see the shape we're creating with the motion. Okay, let's leave that there for now. Let's also change the color of this shape. So when it goes from a heart to the logo, I want it to go from red to black. So I'm gonna cue up my playhead to the first keyframe we created on the control points. And let's head on up to filter, color, and select a colorize filter. And in the inspector, let's remap the blacks to a red. Eh, maybe I wanna go more of a pinky tone. I'm gonna add a keyframe there, jump to the next keyframe in our timeline, and we're gonna change this back to black. And now let's focus on bringing some motion to our text. On the love my content, I actually want it to flip in on the X axis. So I'm going to grab my anchor point tool and I'm going to move my anchor point to the top of the letters. Then under the rotation attributes in my inspector window, let's add another overshoot parameter behavior. I'm going to make the overshoot as short as the overshoot on the heart. I'm going to cue up my playhead to the beginning and I'm going to change the start value to where the letters are completely flat. In this case, it's 92 degrees, not 90. And let's play with that ramp duration. Get it nice and bouncy. And then I'm going to add a couple more text behaviors to the end of this text. So under behaviors, we're going to go to text basic and let's pop it out. So the pop out by default has each letter fade out and scale up one at a time. I'm going to move this behavior to the end of my text and I'm going to tighten it up here. And then in the inspector window, let's play a little bit with these controls. I don't want the letters to scale out. I actually just want them to disappear. So I'm going to remove the scale formatting. So each letter just kind of fades out. Then I'm going to add another text behavior to this. Let's go up to behaviors, highlighter, and let's select pirouette. And I'm going to shrink up the pirouette behavior in my timeline again. So hopefully you can see what we're doing. Each letter is twirling out. So, so far we've got overshoots and the twirling out and then the changing shape. I think the overshoot on my text could be a little slower. Now we're getting somewhere. All right, let's enable our join my Patreon text. And this one in my timeline, I want it to start where the first line of text is sort of disappearing. And I'm gonna add multiple behaviors to this one as well. Let's go on up to behaviors, text, basic. On this one, I want the pop in. And again, you can see that my letters are like scaling and fading in. 
Again, I wanna get rid of that scaling and I just want the letters to pop in one by one. I'm gonna tighten this up and I'm actually gonna copy the pirouette behavior from my original text and add it to this text as well. So now it looks like the letters are flipping to reveal the new content. And now we gotta get out of this second line of text into the third line of text, which is my actual Patreon account information. To bring it out, let's rotate this guy on the x-axis once again. So I'm gonna change my anchor point to the top of the text. And in this case, I'm just gonna keyframe on the x rotation. So I'm gonna add a keyframe at zero, arrow over a few frames in my timeline. And this time I want it to swing forward. Let me trim the end of that. And then let's enable my last line of text, which I want to start right when the previous line of text ends. Again, I'm going to change that anchor point to the top of my text, and I'm going to copy and paste the overshoot from our first line of text. So in theory, it should feel like the join my Patreon flips up and the second text flips down. So I think we got the motion right. I do wanna play with a few things here. I'm gonna reduce the font size on this last line of text because it's so much longer than the other lines. Let me draw a ruler and I wanna shrink down this text and reposition it so it's right between those lines. And I think I wanna take the shape and bring it closer to all of my text. And then this whole thing is one group and I wanna center up that group. So I'm going to enable my grid and reposition this group so we're nice and centered. Now I'm gonna publish this as a Final Cut Pro title template. This way, depending on what I'm wearing, I can change the color of the fonts in this animation so I can make it really stand out. I can change the font, change the weight of it, all that stuff. So before I do that, I'm going to navigate over to Project and under my background color, I'm gonna make sure it's changed to transparent. And then I just need to head on up to the file menu and convert project to a title. I'm gonna switch the category to my titles. I'm gonna name it Patreon Snipe 2024 and I'm going to publish it. So now let's head on over to Final Cut Pro and head on over to the Titles and Generator sidebar. Here is my Patreon Snipe. And when I drop it in, there's my animation. But you know what I just remembered? I didn't have this whole thing fade out. I'm gonna go back to motion. This is like how the sausage is made, guys. I'm gonna cue up my playhead to the seven second mark. Select all of these elements and hit the Out key to trim them up. And then on the group, I'm going to add a fade in, fade out behavior and change the fade in time to zero and the fade out I'll change to 10 frames. And now the whole thing fades out. I'm gonna hit Command S to save it and refresh it in Final Cut. And here is how my animation looks over me in my little office setup here. I do think it's a little big. I could, in the inspector here in Final Cut, reduce the scale, but I think I just wanna do that in motion. What do you guys think? Let's head back over to motion. I'm gonna grab this whole group and let's scale it down to that 79% that I liked in Final Cut. And I'm gonna reduce the Y value to be about here. I do think I like that better. I'm gonna hit Command S to save it. And then what I need to do is delete this original title and drop it back into my timeline. Yeah, I think that feels a lot better. So there is my new Patreon community animation. If you guys ever wonder how I make all these little animations on my channel, that's pretty much my entire process. I kind of go through it organically and problem solve as I go. If you guys have other ideas for how to incorporate this Patreon logo, I'm way wide open to those ideas because this logo for me was a tough one. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I picked out some other videos I know you're gonna love and I'll see you again.